Thank you both. <laughs> Coming up on the programme... First, take that, then the Spice Girls. Now, cult 60s band Pentangle has reformed. But first, a roundup of today's news. Our main story tonight, Newsnight has learned. If you're a surviving 60s legend, this weekend brings much to celebrate. Leonard Cohen and Neil Diamond are playing Glastonbury. Brian Wilson of Beach Boys fame is performing in London. Perhaps all great things eventually come round again. Even Pentangle, that folk jazz lineup of the 60s, is making a return. The cult heroes have given up waiting tables in Menorca and such like and are suddenly back in fashion. Robin Denslow reports. In a London rehearsal room, the original lineup of one of the most musically skilled, unlikely but now legendary bands from the 60s are preparing for their first British concerts together in over 35 years. Pentangle became stars in Britain and the States, though no one knew how to describe them. They weren't quite a folk group, although they played traditional songs and the lineup included two acoustic guitar heroes, Bert Yanch and John Renborn. But then they weren't jazzers either, despite their long improvisations and their distinguished rhythm section of Danny Thompson and Terry Cox. Pentangle just sounded different because of the marriage of folk and jazz. Danny and Terry, did, they came from Ronnie Scott's. Uh, they were working with Alexis Colmer and uh, all the visiting American stars, you know, at Ronnie Scott's. And then they used to get some stick for coming down to play with us, you know, from all the jazzers. You know, you're not going to play with those long-haired hippies down the road, do you? you know? There was no plan. It wasn't like we want to get a group together for some kind of thing, you know, like to become a super group or anything. <clears throat> it was just getting together and having a blow. It was very unrehearsed. <laughs> and this is why it's difficult this time round to get it together and nothing now and really rehearse because we never did that before, you know. Pentangle were very much a London band. <laughs> They first got together in a pub in the Tottenham Court Road and gave their first concert as Pentangle here at the Festival Hall in May 67. A year later, they recorded part of their double album, Sweet Child, here. And 40 years on from that concert, they're back in the same hall yet again at the start of their comeback tour. This time hailed as anything from Britain's Grateful Dead to the folk Beatles. They've already sold out the Festival Hall and there are a dozen shows to follow. Bert Yanch and Pentangle were always admired by veteran rockers like Neil Young and Jimmy Page and have now acquired a far younger cult following in the new acoustic scene. So what's the appeal? There is definitely something else with musicians who haven't played together for a long time coming back for other reasons. In a strange way, like Buena Vista Social Club. And these guys who'd sort of probably forgotten that they did... Not that they'd forgotten they did that, but they weren't expecting to do it again. And to do it again becomes a pleasure in a different way. Before. And Madonna's producer phoned me up and said, Oh, I can't believe you're doing Pentangle. Rick no. He said, You're doing Pentangle. I'm going to be there in the front row. I'm going to be crying. So many people have told me this. I'm going to be there. It means so much. And I think, Hold on, Dan, you know. And it, it obviously means a lot to us as well. But to realise that the festival all sold out in two weeks, you know, without a poster, you think, OK. <laughs> Thank you. 
sitting behind the front wheel Got my woman beside me In the 60s, Pentagonal specialised on acquiring unexpected followers. After conquering the British student circuit and notching up a hit album, they were heavily promoted in America, where they were booked to play alongside the greatest rock bands of the day by the era's best-known promoter, Bill Graham. Yeah, those audiences in those days were like completely out of it, shouting and screaming, and he walked on. And we just used to use little tiny Vox amps, and behind was a complete stack of Marshall gear, you know, that Canned Heat and Grateful Dead were doing. And so we must have looked a little bit pathetic, you know, but then Bill Graham went on stage and said, look, if you want to make a noise, go home and watch your John Wayne movies, because I'm going to introduce you to a band from England that you're going to have to listen to. And he introduced us by playing Bill Evans with Symphony Orchestra. And we went on, and it was, it was magical. And they listened? Absolutely, yeah. Very well, Trains again. Pentangle gave very long shows, and when their improvisations worked, they could be magical. When they didn't, even the band got bored. Bert Yanch admits there were times when he walked off or fell asleep during a concert. Yeah, there were times, occasions that that would happen. Where you actually fell asleep on stage? Oh, yeah, yeah, quite a few times, yeah. But I know, uh, times when uh, someone was taking a solo, we would actually leave the stage altogether, and, and they would be very unsure about it whether we were coming back. You know? <laughs> Jackie was always terrified of being left up there on the road. Concerts were quite often a complete shambles but people didn't seem to mind. I mean, there were legendary tales of them, you know, wandering, you know, Bert and John wandering off stage and leaving Jackie McShee to sing on her own for 20 minutes and forgetting about her and suddenly realising in the bar 20 minutes later they'd, they'd left her there on her own. <laughs> This time it'll be different. They're reviving the old repertoire, but with no lengthy improvisations. Come here, sweet lover. Won't you take my hand? The original lineup broke up in late 1972 because they were exhausted by the non-stop cycle of recording and lengthy tours. But they've continued as successful musicians, and there have been projects with different members of the old band working together. The exception was drummer Terry Cox, who toured with Charles Aznavour and spent over 20 years running a restaurant in Menorca. It's just incredible. I never thought I would ever play again. <laughs> It's, honestly, I think it has affected me more than anybody, to be honest, because they've all been working, doing various things. And you've been running a restaurant? And I've been running a restaurant, yeah. I mean, the number of people that know Pantangle is frightening. I belong to this amateur quiver and a bar. There's no where to run, no, there's no place to go. The hunter is fast and ready. So why do they think they're back in fashion? I think it's, it's just generations, you know, it's, uh, it's because we're still alive to start with, you know, because uh, you find that with uh, uh, Led Zeppelin as well, I mean all those bands, uh, they have gone a full circle and come back again, you know. I'm amazed that these like 20 year olds are actually really liking it. I'm, I'm knocked out. You're very fashionable. <laughs> I don't feel very fashionable, <laughs> but I'm very grateful. In my day, if you look back at those original New Orleans performances, it's the same difference in time, right, between the guys that came out, the Americans that we idolised, that made the first kind of recordings, and now the gap between the 60s and now it's the same period of time, you know, so now we're like those old characters, I guess.
Rebirth of Pentangle. I wonder if that's in our editor's record collection.